Today we celebrate Haitian Flag Day, a 219 years old symbol of African liberation for the betterment of humanity. The Haitian flag was adopted on May 18, 1803, on the last day of the Congress of Arcaïe, under the supreme authority of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. A year after the Congress of Arcaïe on January 1, 1804, in Gonaïve, Dessalines, as commander-in-chief, would address himself to the citizens of Haiti in a document now known as the Haitian Declaration of Independence. Under a banner headline, Liberté ou la mort, Independence or Death, he wrote, It is not enough to have restrained those ever-evolving factions that one after another mocked the specter of liberty that France dangled before you. He ended his letter asking those who would be citizens of Haiti to swear, finally, to pursue forever the traitors and enemies of your independence. This short video seeks to catalog some of the history of those around the world who, inspired by the abolition movement sparked that day at the Congress of Arcaïe, would follow the path they forged, and so often with the material assistance provided by Haitians, would win their own independence on the Jacobin principles of liberté, égalité, fraternité, betrayed by the French who first coined the phrase, but made real by the blood sacrifices of the Haitian people. It was his goddaughter, Catherine Flon, who sued the flag for the first black republic in the world. Prior to Catherine Flon, many women played decisive roles in the War of Independence of Haiti. Africans everywhere must know about Cécile Fatima, Dédé Basile, Marie-Jeanne La Martinière, Romaine La Prophétesse, and not limited to Victoria Abdaraya Toya Montou, a Daomean freedom fighter in the army of Jean-Jacques Dessalines. And she's the one who also groomed Dessalines in all warfare tactics. Haiti's founding fathers, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, met his wife on the battlefield. Claire Heureuse Félicité Bonheur Dessalines was in the trenches caring for soldiers from both sides of the conflict. That was over two decades before the birth of Florence Nightingale. In the spirit of liberation and elevation of humanity, Jean-Jacques Dessalines declared before the universe the declaration of freedom of all Africans. The Polish mercenaries were brought over by France to kill the Africans, but instead fought alongside them. They understood and adhered to the right cause. The Poles were declared citizens of the first black republic, full status as Haitians. In 1983, Paul Jean Pop II visited Haiti. He mentioned how the police contributed to the African re rebellion leading to Haiti's independence. During the Revolutionary War, America and France united against the British when the British occupied Savannah, Georgia in 1779. The Allied America and France launched an attack to take the city back. Stories of the contribution of the Haitian soldiers to America's independence isn't encountered very frequently in history books, but that doesn't make it less, any less significant. The unit of Haitian soldiers who fought in the American Revolution was Les Chasseurs Volontaires de Saint-Domingue, serving under Charles Henri Destin and was the largest unit of soldiers of African descent. All the members of the free men who volunteered to fight the British Haitian Memorial Monument is there in Savannah as a recognition of their role. According to Dr. Philippe Tucker, black Haitians in the early 1800 supported Mexico in the war against Spanish slavery in Texas, but historians have traditionally ignored this. According to Tucker, the revolution in Haiti between 1791 and 1804 signaled the triumph of freedom against slaves owners not only in Haiti but in the Americas as a whole. Spanish slavery was coming down in Central and South America as a result of the brave fight by black Haitian rebels under the leadership of black generals like Toussaint Louverture. 
the interesting point for Mexico and the United States at that time was that it created panic among slave owners in Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and other slaveholding states. It also sent a message to Spain that slavery was on its way out if Mexican revolutionary had their way. Spain was overthrown in 1821 and 1829 slavery was abolished, sending a shockwave among Texas slave owners. Haiti, although located over 6,000 miles away from Greece, was the first country in the world to recognize Greek independence from the Ottomans in 1822. After nearly 400 years of brutal occupation, Greece officially declared independence from the Ottoman. Although the fighting had begun a year before, inspired by the courageous uprising of the Haitian people, who were also fighting a much wealthier, well-equipped force, Adamontios Koraïs, a Greek academic and a significant political figure at that time, asked for Haiti's support. He also asked for financial and military support from the island nation. According to some historians, Haiti President Jean-Pierre Boyer sent Greece a massive shipment of 22 tons of Haitian coffee, one of the most sought after commodities during the period, to be sold. The profit could then be used to purchase much needed weapons for the Greeks. Princess Marina of Greece visited Haiti in 1935 to solemnly thank the people of Haiti for helping her country of Greece in 1821. Haiti, the success of the Greek independence war against the Ottoman Empire. Haitian leaders also played a critical role in ensuring Latin American independence by providing aid to Simon Bolivar, the leader of Venezuela's independence movement. Bolivar came to be known as Latin America's great liberator, eventually securing independence, not only for Venezuela, but most of the South America. Haiti helped modern day Northwest Brazil, Guyana, Venezuela, Ecuador, Colombia, Panama, Northern Peru, Costa Rica, to gain their independence. Did you know also that there were Haitian recruited to fight in World War II for the United States. Did you know that there were Haitians among the Tuskegee Airmen? In 1942, Haitian prisoner Elinesco implemented an aviation corps program. We know that at least five Haitian pilots went for training at the Tuskegee Institute, and most of them were the Haitian Army or Air Force. Denmark Vesey, a carpenter and formerly enslaved person, allegedly planned an enslaved insurrection to coincide with Bastille Day in Charleston, South Carolina in 1822. Vesey modeled his rebellion after the successful slave revolution in Haiti. His plan called for the followers to liberate the city of Charleston and then sail to Haiti before the white power structure could retaliate. Two of the slaves involved leaked details of the plot before it could be implemented. One receiving, uh, on receiving word of the plot, Charleston authority arrested Bessie and his men. Out of 131 men arrested and charged with conspiracy, 67 were convicted and 35 were hung. Vesey was among them. Haiti founding members of the United Nations and Emile Sello served as the first ambassador of Haiti to the United Nations and a member of the Security Council responsible for voting on the independence of countries. He was decisive for the independence of Somalia, Israel, and Libya. Ethiopia Battle of Adwa in Pan-Africanism was born it is with Ethiopia, the country which was victorious over Italy and Africa. 
was by envoy Benito Silva of Haiti, a country that defeated Napoleon in the Western Hemisphere. Benito Silva was sent to Ethiopia by Haitian President Nor Alexi. Silva stayed in Ethiopia, became the aide de camp of Emperor Menelik II, who defeated the Italian at the Battle of Adwa in 1896. Haiti provided all the assistance it could muster to make the Battle of Adwa the success that is celebrated annually in Ethiopia. Thank you very much. And I urge you to read about Haiti with all that you can. Look up the books. Read the Black Jacobin if you haven't not yet. Because Haiti was created as a beacon of freedom for you and for me and for Africans everywhere on the world. Freedom is precious and it is a cause that must be celebrated. Because Haitian history is black history for blacks everywhere.